You don't know, I don't want to take names. You know, many of our, some of our leading men in America might be one of those 5,000. We don't know. But can you see? The answer. I said, you have a surplus. Four million more women in England than men. Four million more women than men on the East Coast alone. He says, 1.6 million more women than men on the East Coast of England. What do you do with them? Pickle them, send them to Tibet. They're running short of women. Send them there. What? I says, no, there is a type of man who does not mind taking on extra responsibility. I saw it on your program here. I was in Canada. And from across the border, from Buffalo or somewhere, there was a program being beamed in all directions, also to Canada in the hotel. I switched it on, and I see a program about polygamy. And there was a man there. He said, I got eight wives. He was an ex-Mormon. He was um, excommunicated. The Mormons at one time, they allowed polygamy, unlimited polygamy. Joseph Smith and Brigham Young had many wives. So now, because of the force, pressures from the other groups, he said, <laughs> you Mormon, how many wives have you got? <laughs> you Mormon, how many? so they threw away. No more. But this Mormon, and he was telling, he gave a figure, a startling figure. About now, he said, 20,000 Mormons have been excommunicated for having more than one wife. They have them. They can't register them, but they have more than one wife. 20,000 Mormons. This man is said, I got eight wives. And they're all happy with me. And none of them were married before. None of them. They were not virgins, but they were none married before. Then in the, from the audience, live audience, you see, one nice, plumpy, middle-aged woman, she stands up and says, look, what about me? He said, you too. Give me your address. I'll contact you. You see, you ask those women who have got no husbands. There will be about 20 million who are in the marriage market. 20 million in the marriage market, at least, who are hungry for husbands. And they are hunting for men in New York. I'm reading, they are hunting for men. And the men are becoming shy and becoming gays. <laughs> you know, before coming here, I started, I left home, I think on the 16th of uh, November, no, October. October, Pakistan, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Sharjah, Al Ain, and here. And I have been telling my people there, I said, you people, don't be fools, man. Running to Bombay, running to Beirut, running to London. What for? I said, go to New York. Try and help them to solve the problem. <laughs> Bring. I said, four, four at a time. You know, you must bring four, four at a time. Your country is sparsely populated. And there's no population. Vast stretch of lands and no people. Saudi Arabia, with that vast expense of land, there's only about six to eight million people. I said, get them four, four at a time. And multiply the ummah. And Allah will bless you. You know, you'll be happy. You solve the Americans' problem. And you solve your own problem. Increase the ummah. If you can't propagate, procreate. Now, I would like to see Brother Swagart write a book. Those brethren who are here from his group, I said, look, here is a problem. Very serious problem. Your sisters and daughters, my sisters and daughters, they are all mine. I love them too. And I says, I feel for them. By God, I feel for them. They are literally going to the dogs. Literally going to the dogs. You read Dr. Kinsey's The Life of the American Female. Put it here in your country. The Life of the American Female by Dr. Kinsey. The Life of the American Female is the same as the British female, the French female, the German female. Same! They're literally going to the dogs. I said, no, nah, Islam supplies the answer. You will not hearken to it. I said, then you simmer in your soup. You are in hell. You are in hell and you'll remain in hell with your drunkards, with your sodomites, with your surplus women. There is no way out for you but to accept Islam. Islam offers you a solution. Jesus Christ says, for he will guide you into all truth. All truth. All your problems. Bring them. Islam has the answers to all your problems. You haven't got them. And you'll never have them. You prescribe a remedy for alcohol. Brother Swagat, he says, I never drank in my life. I believe him. He never touched beer. He never smoked. He never drank alcohol. I take off my hat to him. In this environment, I says, man, you are an angel. No, no. Look. In this environment, you didn't touch cigarettes, you didn't touch beer, you didn't touch any type of alcohol. I said, you are an angel. But the solution to your problem, you haven't got it. 
You see, your preachers, your evangelists, your born again Christians, he's telling you in his book, the preacher. He says, they, the preachers, you know, alcohol. At a meeting of the evangelists, the preachers, the hot gospelers, the Bible thumpers. They were asked, somebody suggested, look, you people, you know, those of you who are prepared to speak out against the drinking of alcohol, imbibing of alcohol, please stand up. And nobody stood up. They all want to drink. You know why? And the reason, and Jimmy, brother Jimmy says in his book, that they reason. Reasoning is, he said, oh Lord, Jesus Christ turned water into wine. If it was good enough for him and his disciples, it's good enough for us. Logic is very good. And they tell you that this WNE wine, brother Jimmy believes it was pure grape juice. I says, brother, you are not reading properly. You see, at the end of the feast, towards the end, when wine had run out, Jesus was asked by his mother, he says, look, help these people. You know, solve the problem. She knew that he had certain mysterious powers. So he says, woman, he's telling his mother, woman, what have I to do with thee? My time is not yet. I say, is this how you call your mother? Same word, woman, he uses as the prostitute. He says, woman, where are thine accusers? For a prostitute, he uses the word woman. For his mother, he calls her woman, not mother. He never called her mother in his life. According to the scriptures, he never called her mother. Woman, woman. He says, woman, I don't believe it. But that's the scripture says. Woman, what have I to do with thee? My time is not yet. And when he's persuaded, he says, all right, fill up the vats with water. And he turned water into wine. Since then, wine has flowed like water in Krishna. And that wine, the, the imbibers who had been drinking the whole night, they say, why have you kept the best wine for the last? Why? In other words, it must have been a very strong, potent drink. If you have been imbibing, any drunkard will tell you, if you're imbibing whole night, your senses, they get dulled. You need a stronger and stronger drink, more and more alcohol to make you feel that you're drinking something. If that person, after drinking heavily for the whole night, you give him pure grape juice, he's like mud water. So when the man says, why have you kept the best for the last, means it must have been something very strong and potent. Is the same W-I-N-E wine reasons the preacher. In Greek, as W-I-N-E wine that Lot drank and prohibited with his daughters. Same W-I-N-E wine in Greek. What Lot drank, same W-I-N-E wine that Jesus turned water into wine. This is an excuse. The only religion which says don't touch it is Islam. You listen to this Allah's command, solution is there. You don't listen, you're clever. Your cleverness now is coming in. You are preachers, he says. About the preacher, Brother Jimmy Swaggart. He says he went to the bank. He must be going very often. But he goes to a certain bank, bank manager. And he says, you know who are the worst payers? Asking Jimmy. He says, no. He says, preachers, painters and prostitutes. Three P's. P, P, P. The banker says. And Jimmy says, he said, I agree. I agree. Say, I don't know about painters and prostitutes, but I do, know, I do know about preachers. This is his testimony. I said, look, these are the born again. Those who have the spirit in them. They said, the spirit permeates in them. When you speak to them, he said, the spirit is telling me this. And the spirit is telling me. And his direct communication with God. God speaks to him. He says, son, son. The Lord, I believe, spoke to my heart and said, you tell this distinguished gentleman this. When you speak to them, he said, the Spirit is telling me this, and the Spirit is telling me, and his direct communication with God, God speaks to him, he says, son, son, which he didn't speak to his own son, in, in inverted commas, Jesus Christ, he never addressed him as son. He speaks in the third person, about his own son, in inverted commas, his own son. But when it comes to anybody, everybody, all of these people, he said, God speaks to them. You know, if I had the chance, I'd say, what language? What language was he talking to you in? English? What language? Hebrew? Greek? And he called you son. In this one instance, a son again and a son again. He said, look, in certain problems, he said, look, I cannot tell you. God told him, I cannot tell you. I said, why couldn't he? Why couldn't he tell you? Didn't you know the answer? Or oh, you were not fit? Why cannot, cannot he tell you? You ask me a question, either I'm ignorant, I don't know. Or I said, no, I can't tell you. Not now. 
I'll tell you on the way out. There may, there may be a reason. He said, you tell Mr. Didat if it was God that spoke to me. But when it comes to anybody, everybody, all of these people, he said, God speaks to them. You know, if I had the chance, I said, what language? What language was he talking to you? English? What language? Hebrew? Greek? And he called you son. In this one instance, son again and son again. He said, look, in certain problems, he said, look, I cannot tell you. God told him, I cannot tell you. I said, why couldn't he? Why couldn't he tell you? Didn't he know the answer? Oh, you were not fit. Why can I, cannot he tell you? You ask me a question, either I'm ignorant, I don't know, or I said, no, I can't tell you. Not now. I'll tell you on the way out. There might, there might be a reason. But the relationship, born again. There are 75 million born again Christians in America, according to Billy Graham in his book, How to Be Born Again. 75 million means one third of America are angelic. They've got the spirit of God in them, one third, besides the preachers, one third. And Jesus says, a little leaven, leaven at the whole. You need a little yeast to ferment the whole loaf. If you have one third yeast in your bread, one third, and if it doesn't ferment the loaf, I said, there's something wrong with your yeast. Yeast, this is what you're talking about. <laughs> the Bible does speak about the holy prophet of Islam. I have written a book expounding the verse I started with. You get that book. The title of the book is What the Bible Says About Muhammad. Fully detailed. On this verse, I give 15 different reasons to prove that that prophecy, I'm quoting in the Bible, from the Bible, does not refer to Jesus but to Muhammad. Now, what you have to do, you it to yourself. Get the book, read it, memorize the verse. You don't do that. You are here for entertainment. I know. You like to be entertained. Everything is entertaining you. So you come along to see this new entertainer. No. <laughs> no. You owe it to yourself. In this environment, look, you can change the people. Wallah. And I tell you, it's the destiny of Islam to change this country. You have it. Allah has given it to us. He's telling us in the Quran. He's